I wanted to talk about how I got promoted at Google in just one year. And don't worry, this isn't a humble brag video, nor is it a video on me telling you how to get promoted. I'm just sharing my story and you can take away from it whatever you want. So it's 2021, I just joined Google. Someone on my team is actually leaving. And so I get assigned one of the projects that they were supposed to work on. This is like my first real project and it's intended for a mid-level engineer. So when I'm assigned this project, I'm told that it might be more difficult than I am able to handle. But I chose to accept the project anyway, kind of just because I felt like saying no would make me look bad. So I just took it. The first thing to do was to write the design doc. This project was about taking part of a monolith and migrating it to a microservice. So I went ahead and wrote the design doc with honestly not a lot of supervision. And as you can imagine, it wasn't a very good one. Somehow there was a staff engineer who wasn't even a part of my team. Somehow he found the design doc. He emailed my manager and CC'd me onto the email and basically said like, look, this guy's doing something really bad. The way he's designing this is completely wrong. This isn't gonna work. Ultimately he was right. So I'm honestly glad that he pointed that out. And then of course, I sort of worked with him to make the correction so that I knew I would be doing the migration correctly. The TLDR is basically this monolith used a database and the way I was going to migrate the microservice was I was going to continue having it talk to the original database, but basically this monolith was going to go down. It was scheduled to be shut down at some point in the future. And this database was also supposed to be, I didn't realize that. And there were a couple other things with the architecture as well. Now, before this project and before I started working at Google, I was just doing leak code for literally like a year straight. I really didn't do any projects or real development. So as you can imagine, my real world coding skills were actually pretty rusty. And so I went ahead and started migrating a lot of the code. It wasn't a ton, but I was definitely very slow at coding, a lot slower than I would have liked. But for the most part, I was actually able to do it independently. The work itself really just consisted of taking this Java monolith, turning it into a microservice, using better libraries, because the way this monolith was coded, it actually did not have a lot of asynchronous code support. API calls that were being made from here were actually like blocking calls. That was like one of the improvements that was supposed to be made in the microservice. There were also a bunch of third party libraries that this monolith was talking to. And so it was really just about gluing a bunch of APIs together. So now I need this guy to talk to them. Not a lot of complicated code, to be honest. The hard part about this migration really was just the internal tooling. Had this been something like a Spring Boot and had this been something like a MongoDB database, this would have been a pretty trivial migration, even for someone like me, where my coding skills really weren't where they probably should have been. I struggled a lot with the Google internal tooling. And to be honest, the fastest way to learn internal tooling really is just asking questions. Ask for help, ask your team, because of course, people with more experience with certain tools are gonna know how to do things. And things that would take me days and sometimes weeks to implement could have been done with the help of teammates. But unfortunately, I didn't really ask my team questions. I was kind of traumatized from my experience working at Amazon. If you saw that video, you might know why. But even though I struggled and I went slower than I should have, I was actually able to do it. And I was able to do it independently. Don't get me wrong. Every day I'd wake up and there'd be a new random error, some random BS. And sometimes it really was complicated. It was the types of errors that even my teammates wouldn't have been able to solve immediately. But ultimately, I did it. I demonstrated independence. Think about it from the perspective of a senior engineer or a manager. If you have a junior engineer who is honestly able to get their tasks done without a lot of supervision, you don't really have to worry about them. You don't have to worry that they're not making any progress. Sure, maybe they're going a little slower than a regular mid-level engineer would be. Because, yeah, if I was a mid-level, somebody would probably be like, hey, it's taking a little longer than it should. But a junior who's slow but still independent really isn't half bad. People really like it when you save them time. And people like it when you make them look good. So from my manager's perspective, by giving me this project, she was kind of taking a risk. If I don't deliver it, or if I'm just blocked for months and not making progress, it looks kind of bad for her. At least this is how I kind of look at it in retrospect. 
Now, for the record, I'm 100% not saying you shouldn't ask questions because after I actually finished this project, my confidence was actually increasing a little bit. And that's when I started getting more comfortable asking questions. And I probably asked more questions after I got promoted, which is kind of funny. So when the time finally came to actually launch this migration, launch like this microservice and have it actually serve production traffic, I was really nervous. We launched it with a feature flag and like 30 minutes after launch, I saw an email, a production alert just went off and my team was notified. And as soon as I saw it, I pinged the person on my team who was on call and I was like, bro, an alert just went off for the service I launched. And he was like, yeah, I saw. And then he asked me, what do you think we should do about it? And I kind of paused. I was nervous. I was like in panic mode. I, just, I was just, okay, tell the on-call, he'll handle it and he'll save the day. And as soon as he turned it around on me, I was kind of stunned. You tell me as a junior engineer doing your first production launch, an alert goes off. How would you have answered that question? The version of me that worked at Amazon would have been like, I don't know, dude, I'm scared. Let's just roll back the launch. Instead, I was like, you know what? I'm not backing down. I'm not scared. I'm neat code, God damn it. And I told him, maybe we should compare the latency of the old service and the new service. Because the reason the alert went off in the first place was because the request latency of the service I launched was too high. And believe it or not, there was actually no latency alerts set up for the monolith. This was another reason we were doing the migration in the first place. The way that microservices work at Google, there's this platform called Bach. There actually is some material about it online if you wanna learn more about it. This actually provides a lot of built-in alert capabilities and just a lot of other stuff. So that was like kind of the motivation behind the migration. Yeah, there was no alerts here. Believe it or not, even at Google, that can happen. We didn't actually know for sure the fact that we got a latency alert from this new service, if that was actually out of ordinary or not. Is this unusual? We don't really know. What's the old latency? I had already known exactly how to look at the monitoring charts for the microservice that I set up. I knew exactly where the latency numbers were. That's not going to help me right now because we already know the alert went off, latency is too high. But I had no idea how to get the latency of the old service. And so basically I told the on-call that we should check if this latency is out of ordinary and if so, let's roll it back. About a minute later, he sent me a link to the monitoring charts for this service and the filters had already been applied. Like he sent the URL such that I didn't have to like add the filters and whatnot. So I saw the latency and we both came to the same conclusion. It looks like the latency is pretty much exactly the same. My hypothesis was correct in that there was actually nothing wrong with this microservice. And so at that point, I still asked him, so I guess everything's fine. And then he told me, yeah, everything's fine. So I guess the only thing we need to do is take the alerts that are set up for this service because the reason the latency was high, it was actually not super high. It was like five seconds, which of course is higher than you would like. And it goes by percentiles. I actually don't remember the exact number and what the percentile was, but ultimately the alert went off. So we had to do something. We had to loosen the alert threshold for this. We had to basically set the threshold higher so that we weren't getting like false alarm alerts because we already knew latency is going to be high for this service no matter what we do. And I think the reason for that was some of the dependencies that we were using, or maybe it was even the database. And I think after this, I had really gained the confidence of the person who was on call, who was influential on our team. And I had gained the trust of my manager because I was able to do this pretty independently and it actually worked. Now my manager was able to trust me a bit more. So I got even more work that should have been assigned to a mid-level engineer. About a year after working at Google, I submitted my promo packet. My manager was very supportive. My team was supportive of me. My tech lead was. For that reason, I was able to ultimately get promoted. Now, this is just one data point. It's undeniable that luck obviously plays a factor. You can kind of tell from the story I told, there are elements of luck. I had a very, very good manager. I had a very, very good team, good tech lead. The stars aligned such that I was assigned a project that was higher than it should have been for me. I was actually able to deliver that project by the grace of God. When it actually worked, I was genuinely shocked. I was not expecting to actually be able to get it done. So you can take away what you want from that. 
Of course, there's elements of luck, but I think skill does play a factor. And in this case, I don't think it was my technical skills that actually got me there. I think it was just the will of every day waking up struggling with this damn thing. I hated it every day, but I really did not give up. I wasn't scared when it came time to launch. I was able to defend myself like, hey, I think the code was right. Maybe it's not my code. Maybe the latency number is wrong or something like that, which could have backfired on me, but I took the risk. Things worked out in the long term. As long as you have that will, think about it. How can you possibly fail?